Today we wanted to take the opportunity to illustrate a couple of points about seat foam and its correct installation. We've had a couple of questions about this, so hopefully this will help clear things up. This is a seat frame for a 1969-72 GM Strato Bucket seat. Uh, it's before they went to the high back, um, used in Impalas, Novas, uh, GTO, Chevelle, almost everything except for Corvettes. Um, these are the seat frames that we use for our pre-assembled seats with everything new, but this is a really good uh, tool to show you how this specific foam installs. So we're going to bring the camera in closer and show you this stuff. Um, we're going to show you some of the materials you might use for this earlier one. Uh, we have some other seat foams behind here that we're going to go over as well to show you four different ways that GM did this, and this is how all of our products work. This is the exact same way. So we're going to bring the camera in and show you this stuff. As you can see on the seat frames, here, here, and also on the cushion, there are wires that are already attached to the seat frame. This is what your hog rings are going to attach to through the seat foam in order to create the bolsters that hold you in the middle of the seat. So when we lay the seat foam on top of the frame, we'll see that there are two trenches. We're going to get in closer here. We call these trenches. This section of foam is very, very thin, and it is meant specifically to hog ring straight through to get to these wires on the other side. Most installers will take scissors and just cut straight down this line all the way down, not quite to the bottom, and then they can just go straight through it and you hog ring directly to the wires underneath them and the frames. Now this obviously is an A-body frame, it's not, not a Camaro uh, or Firebird. The Camaros and Firebirds for 67 to 69 install pretty much the exact same way. Um, wherever there is a, a, an appropriate trench to create the bolster, you go straight through it and into these wires in the frame. It's pretty, it's pretty easy, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have your originals, you can follow along exactly as how they were taken apart. Um, but this is how they did it up until 1969 to 72-ish is when they started changing things over. Um, next, we're going to look at a 78 to 81 Camaro Deluxe uh, Bucket Seat Foam. This is seat foam, brand new, for a 1978 to 81 Camaro Deluxe. It's very similar to the other 71 to 81 Camaros. It's similar to the Firebirds of those years. This is what we call floating foam. This foam is meant to be installed on a seat frame that has no springs in it. As you can see, the foam is very thick. Uh, the back is contoured. This is meant to fit into a seat frame with no springs at all. Uh, GM started probably thinking a little more cost effectively on these, and that's why they took the springs out. Now these, as we'll get closer, actually have wires embedded in the foam. You can actually see some of them here and we'll zoom in on this. Um, the best way to install these is to hog ring directly into these wires, which is what they're meant for, uh, and then once you have the upholstery hog ringed into these, then you would install it on the frame. Um, but again, there's nothing that you need to go through the foam for this type of floating foam the wires are embedded in here. And again, we'll zoom in so that you can see it. A closer view of this foam, 78 to 81 Camaro Deluxe, shows you the wire embedded inside. This thick wire is meant specifically to hog ring to right from the, from the upholstery. Runs all the way down the length of this along, you can see the other support structures inside. Again, this foam is meant to be installed with no springs in the frame and the upholstery hog rings directly into the foam. It doesn't have to pass through it like the earlier models. This seat foam is the passenger side backrest for a 1982-3 Camaro LS Couture or Pace Car interior. Uh, exclusive to PUI, no one else in the world has this. But in 1982, GM went to a rod style bolster. What that means is instead of hog ringing all the way down this trench with anywhere from five to ten hog rings depending on what day your car was put together they used a rod so all they did was they just pushed this rod straight through the listing and then shoved the rod up into an eye hook up in the foam that's embedded there and once it's once it's hooked in 
then they would put this straight down and they just hog ring at the bottom and that was it. Uh, we'll get closer so you can see this as well. This is when GM started actually trying to make these a little more production friendly. So in these third generation Camaro and Firebird seat foams, there's a little metal hook built into this foam. It's actually part of the substructure, the metal structure of the seat foam. This rod goes straight up into that and hooks into that. With the listing over this, when you pull this down, it creates the bolsters over the side of the foam. And then you would just hog ring this one rod in one place, and that creates your bolster all the way down the seat. This is a backrest foam from a 93 to 97 Firebird bucket seat. And you can see that there's really no trenches in this. At this point, GM got even more production friendly in making these things with Velcro to create the bolsters. Uh, you've still got good thick foam, obviously, and this is what shapes the bolsters, but there's vel what we call Velcro foam on the back side of the seat covers for these. And that's the soft loop part of the Velcro, and it just pushes right against this, the uh, hard loop, and that creates your bolsters. So all you have to do is just put the seat cover over it, get it good and tight, and push it onto this Velcro, and that creates your bolsters. Um, this didn't really start until the early 90s, so a lot of your earlier models, you're never going to see this. Um, and beyond this, they, GM actually eventually at some point started laminating the upholstery to the foam, which makes it even more difficult to take apart if you need to recover. You'll see this more in late 90s to 2000s, and it probably really won't affect you as far as uh, muscle car restoration goes, but it's just another method that we thought we'd let so you So I hope this that. gives you a little bit of insight on how some of these things are installed. You may be used to working with 60s cars, and you may never have seen the Velcro on the late models, or you may be used to working on the 70s cars and using uh, hog rings and floating foam and never seen the rods that they use in the third gen. Uh, most of these are pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to call us at 1-800-342-0610 or you can email us at sales at We'll be happy to answer any questions you have about installation.